Hello, everybody. It is Dee and Renee, and we are coming to you live. Um, I am in Las Gatas, California today, and Dee is broadcasting from uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta, and uh, we are here to talk about fresh seafood. So how are you, Dee? I am well, thank you. And yourself? Good. D last week had uh, a little eye injury, so we didn't get the broadcast last week. She had a big old uh, pirate's patch on on her eyeball. <laughs> so um, yeah. the seafood that we're um, showing today and talking about today, D was over in Halifax. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Okay, and um, tell us a little bit about kind of, um, I, I know you were really excited to be there on the coast and mm -hmm. have all this fresh seafood available. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the market? I went to several um, because I actually had a lesson in, um, well, seafood and um, what's in season on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and had a lot of learning done um, there. So I was, I have to be honest with you, I was a little disappointed um, because in the markets, um, they were selling a lot of farmed fish, which I was super disappointed. Um, I did though get some good lessons in what's really in season at this time of the year and not. Um, so, you know, if I'm ordering a lobster, for example, well, he was already caught and he's just been kept alive, um, in captivity for a while now, cause it's not lobster season and same with the crab. I can't have fresh crab right now. Um, I could have fresh scallops and uh, fresh halibut was wonderful. So I actually got some groceries shopping lessons in what was actually really truly in season and what's not so that was good too mm -hmm. oh, cool. so yeah. when we were in uh, when we were in uh, Seattle uh, in April we really you know we got to go down right and you were right in the middle of all the fresh seafood so so that was pretty cool so it was a little bit different than Pike's Place than I take it yes Yes, um, lots of the same uh, good information, just like uh, Pikes gave us, like on what was caught locally and coming in off the boats and then what still has to be imported. Um, so just because you're buying ocean doesn't mean that you get to reap the benefit of all the all the uh, fresh seafood that you may enjoy. So it was yeah. a good lesson, yeah. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. So um, if you're hopping on live, I see Sandy is here. And uh, yes, we, we we were not around last week. <laughs> um, but Sorry. Uh, well, it's okay. It's okay. Um, the one thing that we are going to do um, this week, though, is we are going to give away one of these cookbooks. So here's what you have to do. You have to give us a hashtag live. And, and hold on, because you have to tell us a nugget of wisdom that you learned from this broadcast. So as we go through the broadcast, um, if you learned something new, give us a hashtag live and your nugget of wisdom. And then um, at the end of the broadcast, we're going to um, flip through and pick a winner of Dee's uh, Baking Cookbook, which you can get at DeeZRecipes.com. So um, one other announcement, um, Dee on uh, September 17th, is going to be at Positive Transitions um, Weight Loss Clinic, Ideal Protein Clinic in um, Al uh, Calgary, Alberta. And uh, Dee, tell us what you're gonna be doing. They're having a, a grand reopening and I'm gonna put, a, there's a, a Facebook event. So I'm gonna put a link to that in the comments section so that you can, um, if you're in Calgary or close by, you can join Dee at that event. So what are you gonna be doing at, at the clinic? 
Well, so first of all, I'm so excited to see Avril's clinic and have a little tour and learn everything about what her clinic has to offer in health and wellness. So I know Avril has the red light therapy and the Fit 3D. So I am excited to see um, how that works and how she implements that within her ideal protein clinic. Um, I'm going to be on hand. We are going to have some cookbooks available and, of course, some delicious samples um, for clients and anybody who stops in to enjoy. And um, we'll be on hand to help you um, with any of your food um, questions um, and desires. So I'm so excited to spend the day with Avril. So, yes. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Been a, it's been a while since uh, you did a cooking event. So, yeah, uh, yeah we, we got to get you you back doing some of those events. Your last event was the gummy bear event, which was yeah. super fun. Okay. So, again, um, if you when you see a nugget of wisdom um, and you learn something new, uh, all you have to do is say hashtag live and uh, give us your nugget of wisdom. All right, Dee, show, tell us what, what, what we got here. We have some amazing um, Digby sea scallops, and they are the smaller scallops um, instead of the huge ones, but delicious nonetheless. And they are kind of um, done to a almost a blackened, like you were mimicking like a blackened scallop if you've ever had blackened chicken or any kind of blackened fish. Um, and you achieve that by the seasonings you choose to put on them. And roasted kohlrabi is what you see as the feature vegetable. Um, so a really um, hearty, tasty uh, dish. The kohlrabi pairs beautifully with the seafood and both are really simple um, and quite quick to prepare and have a very big, wonderful meal. So, and it's really awesome um, when you actually weigh out your eight ounces raw of scallops, you get a ton. <laughs> so yes, it's a, it's, it's a very healthy serving. So, so um, <laughs> same way with, um, shrimp is it I mean you really get a lot um mm -hmm. in in your serving size um when you you know uh, when you look at the grams of protein and and yeah. all of that I don't think I spelled scallops right there sorry <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no so, spell check is my nemesis so oh dear oh yeah well whatever um <laughs> hi, and uh, Deb coming in from Kansas, so I uh, love it, love it. Two Dubs right in a row. Nice. Um, okay, so remember, if you learn something, um, tell it, give us your hashtag live and your nugget of wisdom. Um, we'll be giving away a cookbook later. So Dee, um, tell us a little bit about um, cooking fish. I think that some people really stay away from grilling, baking, pan frying, searing, because it is, it just seems like you don't know if you're going to actually, uh, you know, the fish is cooked in the middle or not. I'm always confused by that. If I have a specific recipe and I know that, you know, if I have this size or this thickness of salmon, that maybe it's going to be 15 or 20 minutes and and um you know how do you how do you just know <laughs> <laughs> um you always so fish actually cooks extremely fast unless you are working with those uh inch and a half to two inch um, pieces of of fish where those require a little bit more baking time of course but all fish actually turns quite a beautiful opaque color um, if they are actual fillets like your cod and your halibut or your salmon they're going to flake apart quite easily um, and another thing it comes down to preference so some people actually um, like their fish done the same way as some people order steaks so they like rare tuna and rare salmon um, I'm on I am a almost blue rare steak girl has to be rare steak. However, when it comes to fish, 
I like my fish cooked through. I don't like my fish to be wiggly in the middle. And so um, there are lots of online charts that can help and assist you. Um, but the best, the, the best tip that I can give you is that fish cooks extremely fast. Um, but one of the most important tips is it's always best to start with fish that is thawed thoroughly um, so that you're not guessing with frozen fish and making it tough and rubbery when cooking from the frozen state too. Um, so allowing fish to thaw in your fridge um, before use and, and then it becomes a really, really quick um, option to cook, usually just minutes per side um, till it's done. When you're working with things like scallop and shrimp, now shrimp are awesome, especially when you're working with raw shrimp because they turn the beautiful pink opaque and then you know that they're done. Whereas scallops don't turn quite as much color and same with your fish. Um, you're working with salmon, cod, halibut, the mahi-mahi, they, they don't turn much. So you're looking for that flakiness, that tenderness. Um, and then it depends too, if you're going to uh, bake, poach, broil, and then, yeah, I don't like, yeah, it's just not, it's not appetizing to me. Um, and then another thing too is when you're purchasing your fish from your fishmonger, um, you know, were those crab legs that you see there, were they actually pre-cooked and they do they only actually need to be thawed and then um, dipped in a hot boiling bath for, you know, three minutes and you're done and able to serve that fast too. So having information about the food that you purchase is, it can really help you out a long way too. So very often lobster, crab legs, those types of things, um, they're, they're, they're actually pre-cooked for you um, and only do take mi minutes um, to prepare. So, so again, are all, not all uh, crab legs are cooked, are they? No, no. It will state it on the, the packaging or your fishmonger um, will tell you. And I will tell you when buying seafood, um, if you have an actual fishmonger, and it doesn't matter if it's in your local grocery store or in an actual fish market, those gentlemen or ladies behind the counter, they are very, very knowledgeable in what they are selling. So I actually prefer to buy from behind the counter versus just off in the side um, frozen sections by myself. I like to ask them where the, the fish has come from, um, what their recommendations are at this time, and for sure what's in season, what's not in season. And then they can also tell you if any of their products were previously frozen, were they fresh, are they pre-cooked, um, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have um, some crab legs here. Tell us what else we have. Oh, and some fabulous mussels. So those were in season in Halifax. Those were fresh uh, right from Halifax. So I actually cooked up five pounds of those guys in one shot. So we're going to... Um, give you a recipe how you can do a simple steamed mussel. Again, really, really fast and easy. Um, those guys, again, only require about five minutes of steam time and you're done and can plate and serve. Um, and then just a simple slaw um, as a side there. And so we'll give you um, some slaw recipe options as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I, lo I love slaw with everything, especially, yeah. with, especially with my tacos. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> for sure uh, so um, we're giving away a cookbook for Dee's baking recipes and give us a hashtag live and your nugget of wisdom if there is something that you learn on this cooking uh, show today we want to say hi to Suzanne hi, Suzanne. And, uh, Suzanne is in Texas and she is one of our partners in our CBD business. So we've been doing a lot of collaborating. All righty, so we've got some beautiful shrimp here. And what else, Dee? We have a collie rice pilaf to go with our um, shrimp. And um, side dishes and getting those veggies in, they're oh so important and we, we do see a lot of cauliflower rice in a lot of recipes and a lot of um, now it is mainstream in most grocery stores um, to buy cauli rice pre-done. You're, you're hard pressed to find a grocery store that doesn't sell it because it is so popular and it like literally takes minutes to turn it into a delicious side dish. And so 
that collie rice there is literally mimicking real rice pilaf. You use the same seasonings, the same herbs, the same, you can use the same additional veggies, a little bit of sugar-free, carb-free chicken stock, and voila, you have a delicious side to accompany. Um, so I chose to do it with the shrimp, and the reason why is those beautiful, now those are actually Argentinian shrimp, so that was the recommendation, um, even when I was in Halifax, that those were the best quality shrimp that I was able to buy at that time. And they literally only take a couple minutes per side um, to cook. And that was exactly how fast the cauli rice could be prepared as well. So in under 10 minutes, you can have an amazing meal plated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk for one minute because this is kind of a, you know, something that weirds me out is mm -hmm. do you get the shrimp with all of the wrappings on them and the little legs and eyeballs or do you get them, like when you're buying fresh shrimp, do they come without that? Like how do you clean them? Let's talk about that for a second. So. I'm one of those funny people, when you're paying for your things per pound, I actually don't like to pay for the shell. And that was something that we really actually, uh, we, there was a group of us that were going to the fresh fish market. And that was one thing we noticed is that you're, you're, you're paying per pound for fish um, that has a lot of waste on it, especially lobster, especially whole prawns. So I actually didn't choose to buy them because their shelled version, or these ones have a little bit of a shell on, but of course not the whole heads. Um, the price dramatically went down. <laughs> so um, there is a lot of waste in shell. I mean, they look really pretty on a plate um, when they're all in one piece, but there's not a lot of um, actual meat in a lot of those parts. So I, I choose not to. And I'm going to be a little, um, I'm really not a picky eater, but I have to tell you when it comes to lobster, I adore, I adore lobster. I don't adore having to wrestle in a restaurant through its head and the green goo and the yuck. Like I just, it just kind of ruins <laughs> the, the meal for me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, um, my hashtag live nugget of wisdom is I didn't know that you, I'd never even thought about that you would be paying for the shell and all the mm -hmm. other little parts. And uh, that's a really good point you have, Dee, because yeah. I, <laughs> I have bought them both ways. Now let's talk about, do you, do you prefer to saute them as opposed to uh, like boil them or what's, what's the easiest, quickest, most, you know, like I, you know, you make sure you get them all cooked. I, for, I, you know, it really depends on the fish. So for shrimp, I don't like boiled shrimp. Um, very often you will see seafood boils. I'm trying to think of what they're called, where they put everything in one old big pot and then yeah. they dump it on the table. Well, shrimp cook almost instantaneously where your lobster or your crab or maybe other things that have also been thrown in there don't. Um, and I don't like rubber food. And when seafood is overcooked, it is just chewy and rubbery. It loses its delicate flavors. Um, I think texture is really important in seafood. So for shrimp, I absolutely prefer to grill or actually just do them in a pan on the, on the top of the stove. Uh, broiling, I like to broil seafood as well. Very fast uh, method that also sears in a lot of flavor. Uh, crab legs, I... I, I um, sorry, steaming them, or if you they, if they are pre cooked again, just that really quick boiling water bath for crab legs. Yeah, the Argentine shrimp are amazing. Um, not a, they're just they are meatier. Um, they are larger. Uh, they just have an amazing taste to them as well. I would recommend them um, to anyone. Um, so, so, D, one question because I always mm -hmm. I never know this again. Mm -hmm. is is the do you have to wait till the shrimp is a certain color then you know it's cooked yes so the nice pinky opaque color that is that is cooked through okay. um we don't want to eat gray gray shrimps um oh, you'll know the texture you will if you put an undercooked shrimp in your mouth it's going to come right back out <laughs> it's not good so, it's not uh, good 
So Wanda says um, she uh, can't wait to try your cauliflower rice shrimp. So uh, thank you, Wanda, for awesome. joining us. And uh, Deb gave us the first hashtag live. So you guys remember that if you want to win a, a baking cookbook, you got to give us your hashtag live and your nugget of wisdom that you learned on this show. And uh, hello to Joelle out there. Hello, Joelle. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, okay, so this looks absolutely delicious. And by the way, I'm I used to be what I called a pescatarian, which meant that I grew up vegetarian, but then I ate um, fish. Uh, was mostly like my my uh, proteins. Um, so I have branched out since then, um, but I do love 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 fish. So uh, Sandy says that she's hashtag live searing seals the flavor in. Yay, yes, exactly. And and um, so when you sear something, D, you're just, do you have a, a, a like a medium hot pan? Is that how you sear something? Yeah, medium to high. Um, and the really neat thing about when you're actually searing fish is that by the time, if you're searing both sides, um, you're almost done. Um, different with larger cuts of beef and things like that, but searing is, um, uh, if you're working with thin or delicate fish, it does not take long at all um, to finish cooking. Um, and sometimes too, searing fish, even before if you're going to poach it, is a nice method too, because you seal that outside, but then it keeps the inside nice and flaky as well. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. um, Let's uh, say hi to Jenny Lee and uh, Joe. Hello, Jenny. So thank you guys for for uh, stopping in. And so, what is this kind of fish, Dee? That's actually cod. Ooh, I love cod. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was a beautiful piece of cod, um, and it was done with a garlicky fennel and zucchini side dish. Um, so again. Um, I don't know how many of you grew up cooking with onions. Um, I know that depending on which part of the country you grew up or, you know, if the onions are quite a cooking staple in many, many cultures. Um, we cannot use them um, to cook with. You can garnish with them raw just because of they caramelize and the sugar content gets high, but you can caramelize fennel and it is amazing. And it actually doesn't really matter what you throw with that fennel. Um, it is delicious. And so this side dish is simply caramelized fennel. It has quite a bit of garlic in it um, because it was so good. Green onion and summer squash. So yellow, I just call it yellow zucchini. So often we get really confused, if, especially if you're following um, the ideal protein protocol. You get zucchini squash and you get, it'll say summer squash. Summer squash is yellow zucchini. It looks exactly like zucchini except yellow. Um, and that's what you see in the picture here with green onions and then the fronds, the nice feathery fronds from the fennel also make a really delicious garlic. And that tiny hint of licorice that you're going to get off that fennel is delicious with fish. Very nice accompaniment with fish. Um, awesome. mm -hmm. I think what it is, is that the flavored, um, um, the, the light flavor of fish then takes on seasoning so well. Yes, the so blackened fish is really created by the seasonings and then the cooking method um, that you are using as well. Mm -hmm. right. And then uh, Jenny Lee says her hashtag live is she learned to make sure that you fully cook your shrimp and don't overcook thin cuts of fish just to yeah. just clear it. Yeah, awesome. And uh, Deb loves cod. I love cod too. It's a yeah. very, uh, you know, clean, fresh flavor. It's, and, and let's talk for a second, D, about what should your fish smell like? <laughs> or what shouldn't your fish smell like? <laughs> your fish shouldn't have that horrible fishy smell. It really shouldn't. Um, if it does, now previously frozen fish will have that aroma but it like a, a little bit stronger aroma but fresh fish um you actually might 
my youngest calls it, it should actually, you should be able to still smell the ocean on it a little bit is what it should, it should smell that fresh. So you might have that faint ting, uh, tinge to it. Um, you don't want to see slime coating on your fish. Uh, you don't want to see mushy parts on your fish. So if you're buying a lovely piece of salmon um, or tuna or mahi mahi, like really kind of um, inspect that if it's not a whole fish and it's, it's just the, the fillets, um, really kind of give it a nice inspection. We want no mushy parts um, in there. We want it to be nice and solid and, and firm. So um, things that are already falling apart, um, um, pass them over for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's a, that is such a, a, a big thing that people don't realize is like fish should not smell fishy. If it smells fishy, don't eat it. <laughs> um, a, few other, a, a few other, a few other, yeah. And actually, it, actually, it was a piece of of um, of uh, frozen fish, and I just thought because it was frozen, it must be fine. And actually, I got deathly ill on it. So yeah, yeah if it smells. Don't don't forget, even if it no. was frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it. that actually rings true for, um, um any type of meat it, it shouldn't it, it should not smell horrible um strong flavored fish mild in flavor well definitely um cod halibut your mahi mahi so your white fishes are going to have a way more gentler flavor um tuna salmon uh trout Trout's still uh, quite nice, but it's a little bit different. White fish definitely um, is the most delicate and it takes on the flavor um, of your seasonings um, really, really well. Mm -hmm. So if you are on here and you wanna give us a hashtag live and your nugget of wisdom, we're going to pick a, a winner of a D's baking book uh, download, her ebook download. And, and one of the things we do want to let you know is all of the recipes and the pictures are now to the graphic artists. And we're on our way to our next cookbook, which is all about quick and easy dinner meals or lunch meals that have uh, eight ounces of protein, two cups of veggies. So um, super, super yummy. And uh, we've categorized it into beef, chicken, pork, fish, and vegetarian. So it's really a neat compilation of about 50 recipes, right Dee? You betcha. Looking I forward to sharing that with everybody. Yep. Um, okay, um, so I didn't, I didn't put all my pictures in order. Uh, apparently correctly. So we got these these crab legs here. We already talked about crab legs. Okay. Let's talk about the mussels. Like I love mussels, but I mm -hmm. have to tell you, it was one thing that I never learned to eat until I was an adult because they oh. just had a funny texture. <laughs> they looked weird. So let's talk about that. Well, so mussels are, they're that guy to me that they have that fine line. So again, if you overcook them, then they're, they're just like little bits of an eraser, really. It just tastes like a rubber eraser. It's just like, ooh, like, you know, chewy and doesn't really taste like anything. Um, if they're undercooked, well, then it, legit, you could get sick. So we don't want that. Um, but really what you're looking for is, I love steamed mussels. Now you can do mussels in sauces. Great, I've done some great tomato sauce ones, um, but a just simple steamed mussel. You can steam them open if you're in phase one um, in just chicken broth with garlic and herbs and spices and parsley. And it just takes a little bit of water in the bottom of a pot. In goes your mussels close the lid, steam for five minutes or until the mussels open and you're done. Any mussels that do not open, you just discard them. They're, they've died, you don't wanna eat them. So if they don't open, they're not safe for consumption. So a really simple, simple, easy um, 
method to follow. Now I am going to go back through my notes because I actually one day weighed out muscles on how many you could have for eight ounces. So I'm going to find that for you just to give you an approximate, like if you were to steam a pound, this is how many ounces of protein you get. So I'm going to do, I'm going to find that for you guys. Cause that's always a tricky one too, because clients will be like, those are really hard thing to measure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay. So, so um, you, when you're doing this process, first of all, you're going to prepare the water and then are you going to put like all the garlic and the parsley and everything in first and yep. then dump the mussels in? Is it yep. boiling before yep. you, so, so the water's already boiling, then you dump the mussels in until they open. Is that right? Or you can assemble all your ingredients and then turn it on from there. Either way, you're going to have to get that pot to produce that really, really hot steam to steam those muscles open. Um, so one, one thing that traditionally happens is people use way too much liquid to get the muscles open. You don't need a larger quantity of liquid to steam those muscles open. So like just an inch or so in the bottom of that pot is going to produce enough steam um, to get those muscles open. So of course, if you're like, I steamed five pounds in one shot. So I used a, a great big pot uh, with a lot of garlic and so a little more broth, but again, um, inch, inch and a half, two inches, but you were um, and the broth then is safe to consume as well when you're done. So if you've got a low carb bread or made one of, you know, D's baking bread, you can dip those, uh, that delicious um, juice um, <laughs> into your bread and enjoy as well. Phase four, um, maintenance, uh, butter, of course, and wine are amazing additions um, to steaming open your muscles and your fish as well. So yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. lots of options. Mm -hmm. that's a definite um, yeah. and so um, you know that was my last picture it was my favorite picture as you know <laughs> I always call my last picture my favorite um, okay so we we've uh, you know quickly gone through our half an hour um, but um, we did want to talk just our we're gonna do a quick five minute talk about um, plateauing and and so i've seen this question come up recently you know what do i do when i am plateaued so um if you guys want to put out your hashtag lives when uh we're gonna at the end we're gonna pick our d's uh recipe book winner um d what does that mean like what's a plateau you know in four years I've actually never seen a client that has had an actual plateau and that, it, you know, maybe one, but I would have to work really hard to find an actual plateau. So not losing weight for one week is not a plateau. Um, you have to take in all um, factors. So are you doing your measurements every week for starters along with that? So maybe you have a week where the scale doesn't give you what you want, but maybe your inches moved. Um, you need to take everything into consideration. But here are some really big factors. Um, more often than not, food is being under consumed or over consumed. Not intentionally, but it happens. Um, some other really big things that happen are caffeinated beverages or beverages that are not allowed. Um, might have snuck in or for example if you are drinking you know two three four cups of coffee a day you actually need the same amount of water just to cancel that coffee out and you're starting from zero with water consumption so water is extremely important especially if you have slower sluggy weight loss um, are your vitamins being taken um, you know, did you eat out multiple times that week and unknowingly, like here's a huge one that I've seen multiple times this week on supporter pages is that somebody stated that their Chick-fil-A nuggets were the most amazing chicken. You betcha. They're chock full of sugar and additives that you cannot have. Um, those will ruin your week, um, or can ruin your week. Um, maybe one time it doesn't, but they are full of non-protocol ingredients that can slow you down. 
Now, did you make that choice knowing that? You didn't. Um, so it is a really big learning curve. And there are lots of foods out there, fast foods and restaurant foods that may appear to be a good choice in the interim or in the moment, but they actually can really stall or ruin your progress. Um, same thing when you order those beautiful salads and you say, well, you know, it just had a few shreds of carrot or avocado or there was just a few dried cranberries on there or, you know, it was just Parmesan cheese. So a few of those items are chock full of sugar and carbs and can actually help take you out of ketosis. If they don't take you out of ketosis, they can absolutely stop you from losing because your body is going to use that as a source of fuel. And the same for as any fat. So very often I will hear a lot of clients say, well, it was just some fat. So just know that if you ate extra fat than what is prescribed in your protocol, your body has to use that as a source of fuel before it can get down to burning your own. Um, so it's really, really important that you really look at every single day and every single factor. Yeah, great point, Deb, lack of sleep. Um, and then two, why, are, why aren't you sleeping? Um, so there's sleep hygiene that um, can be practiced and may have to be practiced because lots of us are terrible sleepers um, from a multitude of reasons, whether it's screen time or menopause or, you know, stress, all those types of things. So there's lots of, lots of factors. Um, one of my favorite ones um, is the extras, is the sweeteners. Um, and the pages are full of, well, I do that and I'm fine. Or my coach says it's fine. Listen, guys, it's the first thing that if you're having slow weight loss, you have to be honest with yourself. How much syrups are you using? How much, you know, maple syrup, sugar-free maple syrups are you using? Are you chewing gum? Every serving of gum is a sweetener, guys. It doesn't matter if it's Trident or Pure or Spry or it doesn't matter. It is a sweetener per serving. You're allowed maximum four per day. Um, I read a comment that a coach said that Tic Tac gum was protocol. It's, it's a box that's a little shaker box full of carbs enough to pull you out of ketosis. Um, you know, so not, not recommended. Um, Sugar-free ketchups. Barbecue sauces, you know, some of those are best saved for uh, maintenance if you're not, you know, making your own might be a better choice. But you really have to dig in and look at what may be slipping, um, slipping in. Um, just know as well, under eating will not speed up your weight loss progress. And what happens is if you under eat when your body is in ketosis, you give your body no choice but to use your muscles. It's, it has to be fed. So please, 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 please follow the minimum prescribed food um, and get it all in. Otherwise, you risk losing muscle mass and not your fat. Um, for those that are having no problem getting food in, but then say, well, you know what? My coach doesn't know, but I eat five carbs worth of crackers every day and then don't eat a packet. So what you're doing there is you're pulling yourself actually out of ketosis. You're giving your body enough sugar that you're out of ketosis, but then not eating enough calories for being out of ketosis. So your body uses your muscles instead of burning your fat. I know it's a lot of information to digest, but it's really, really important. You know, there is a reason why the protein comes pre-digested in lower calorie form. Um, high biological so it uptakes and your body can use all of it so um, usually once we get really really um, um, down to the nitty-gritty in a journal and guys that is why journaling is imperative and even if you're not doing a program like ideal protein if you're just doing your own low carb low sugar journey write your meals down write everything down and you might be really surprised so our water enhancers, the tangerine, mangosteen, and lemon are not extras. They are true freebie items. There is not enough sucralose in them to be counted as a sweetener. Um, the beautiful thing about the amount of, of the sucralose that are in them is we can't digest the sucralose. It is not absorbed in our intestines. So um, it just simply goes in and goes out. And that is why those are true freebies. So you're not getting a glycemic index. You're not getting a sugar spike, anything like that. So yes, 
the IP water enhancers, you may use them as, as you desire. But great question. Great question. A good thing to talk about. So, and like I said before too, lots of times, you know, it, your, your week looks amazing. Your journal looks amazing. And then you find out that ah, I can't have taco salad from Taco Bell because they put sugar in their spice. Or it's those kind of little things too um, that can really slow things down. So don't get discouraged. Talk it through with your coach, you know. Um, yeah. All the things. All the things. I love all of those. Those are, uh, you don't need my information because. <laughs> well, there's so much. There's no, so much. It's, it's really, that was very, very comprehensive. And, you know, like, like uh, Wanda said, I love this talk because I'm losing weight slow, but maybe it's because of these things. And, and do remember that we're, we're each different. Don't compare yourself. Just get, you know, if I'm a slow loser, it is what it is. And, and the bottom line is, is you're losing. So just, yeah. just keep at it. Keep at it. Okay. D. Tell me what your favorite number is between one and 10. That's how we're going to pick our winner. Okay. It is seven. My favorite number is seven. Seven. So I'm going to go from the bottom and I'm going to look at all the lives. So Deb was number one. Number Sandy was number two. Uh, Wanda was number three. Deb Holuska was number four. And then we have, uh, oh, Deb Watt again. Here we go. Deb Watt, you win the download. So what I want you to do, uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, I want you to um, message me through D's um, low carb and um, send me, or just, you know what, post it on here, post me, uh, or whatever, if, if it's private. I need your email address so I can send you the download. <laughs> you guys, you guys need to know this too, that when we do this live show, because we are broadcasting from the U S and Canada simultaneously, I actually can't see all your comments, you guys in the live. Uh, I don't get to see all of this until after. So Renee has, is, is uh, the master controller there. So <laughs> I am in complete control. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys, we've overstepped as usual. Um, mm. but, uh, thank you so much for this week. And guess what next week is going to be? Pumpkin Spice Week. Woo! <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys are going to get bombarded. I've given a few little sneak, little little teasers. Um, you guys are going to get bombarded in September here with a lot of pumpkin spice, apple, uh, the very fall um, traditional uh, baking side dishes, fall color, a lot of that repeats. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you get your if you're a baker start your baking agents and um get some supplies ready and we're gonna have some delicious delicious food and actually that is uh avril's clinic is going to get some delicious fall baking um uh, yeah for the grand reopening if you're near calgary september 17th positive transitions Go meet D and uh, check out Avril, and and uh, it's going to be a great experience. All right, you guys, thank you so much. As usual, bye bye. We will see <laughs> you next week. <laughs>